All right, welcome to sculpting every day for the foreseen future. I'm going to use this channel to uh, sculpt a new animal or character or something like that every day until Christmas. That's my current plan with the ultimate goal being to sculpt something every day until I get 100,000 subscribers. I don't know if that's in the realm of possibility. I don't know how popular these sorts of videos are, but I'm starting with Super Sculpey. Uh, nearest holiday coming up is Halloween, so I guess I'll try to make something Halloween and why not go with something classic that I've made a lot of, which is polymer clay cats. And uh, I guess a Halloween black cat would be a good idea. Maybe give them a little witch hat or something like that. All right, so as you see, I just took a small ball of super sculpy polymer clay. can be found at Hobby Lobby. And I've uh, rolled it until it's malleable. This this stuff varies. Sometimes you get a really hard package. Sometimes you get a nice soft one. I get a ni nice soft package this time so I don't have to make it malleable too much because it already is. And I just kind of use my fingers to, uh, well, here, let me start from the beginning, beginning here. Just uh, it's a ball. It's a ball right now. See, see? And kind of, kind of pinch about a third of that off for the head. And uh, let's see, we're going to kind of turn the body into a bean, but then we're going to pinch off the butt and uh, turn it into a tail. All right, now we've got a head, a tail, and the body. So I'm going to pinch the bottom half again and pinch the front half. Then I'm going to take the front half, half and pinch it into two pieces for the legs here we go and do the same for the bottom half or the back half uh, the back half normally would be a little bit bigger legs because you want to include the hips again a bit I guess and after that it's just a matter of kind of smoothing it out the whole thing and you don't really have to worry about a shape too much until you smooth some of these out or else you're gonna end up Redoing it over and over again. Alright. It's going nice and smoothly so far. There we go. There we go. And for the head, I'm going to kind of try to make it a little bit pointy, I guess. You know, so you can kind of make out the, the nose. This is where the nose is going to be right here. And then you're gonna squeeze the top, pinch the top, in a couple spots to make the ears. And then you're gonna wanna smooth that out a bit. Uh oh, I hear my cats fighting in the background. I just adopted a new cat and they are not getting along the greatest. No violence yet, but a lot of hissing. All right. Okay. So now we get the basic form of a cat. If you wanted to at this point, you could uh, add some more details, like, you know, take something and some small lines in it like that to kind of make it look furry but normally actually you know this is a Halloween cat so I will do this it'll make it look a little more shaggy I don't normally do this because I like nice smooth kitty cats I don't even really have tools for this sort of thing. That's why I'm using the back of a X-Acto knife. But since it's Halloween, we want a raggedy cat. You know, something like, kind of looks like a stray black cat. It's going to cross your path and bring you years of good luck. Because all that nonsense about bad luck 
and black cats is just that nonsense. These cats are going to bring you so much luck. You're going to get so many compliments when your family sees what you've made. I know that for a fact because I've been making cats and even the ones that don't come out very good always get compliments. Is that important? I don't know. It might be important to you. There we go. Obviously, you could spend a lot more time on this, getting these lines just picture perfect. And you might do that if you're only making one or two, but I plan on making an army of these things. Eventually, they won't all be on camera. Because nobody wants to see, see the same video a hundred times. But I think that's pretty good for the most part. Got a lot of hair going Nice raggedy cat, and again, since it's a Halloween cat, oh, I forgot the tail, my bad. My bad. Give him a little. Alright, I got the other side. Alright, since it's a Halloween cat, we're going to give them the classic Halloween pose, I think, where their back is arched a little bit. Which doesn't take too much doing, although you might ruin a little bit of the fur that you just mangled up. Maybe I should have made the pose before I added the lines. That's okay, I can redo some lines. But yeah, give him a little bit of an arched back so he looks angry. I guess we could put his ears back a little bit too if he's gonna be an angry cat, an angry Halloween cat. There we go. And tail's gonna be up like, I think straight. An angry cat would have a straight tail, right? There we go. That's looking pretty good if, if you ask me. I'm gonna fix a little bit, give him a little more hair there since I messed it up with my fingerprints. There we go, Halloween kitty. I'm going to throw this in my oven for about, oh, 20 minutes or so, give or take, 15, 20 minutes. It'll be ready for painting. I'll be back. All right, here's my black cat, fully cooked. He's kind of in a, almost like a pouncing pose. I actually meant to have his tail raised a little more, but I guess I didn't put that properly in the oven. That's okay. He still looks pretty cool. So, I mean, it's a black cat, so it's pretty simple to paint. It's, it's almost like you can't mess up because all you're doing is using one color and just... Lopping it on once you get it completely covered in black paint, you can smooth it out a little bit. But this is supposed to be a Halloween cat, so if it's a little rough looking, that's okay too. It's supposed to be a scraggly Halloween cat. See his uh, paw got a little extra toasty in the oven. If you cook it too long, it is very possible to burn super sculpy, but a little toastiness doesn't hurt it. You can do a little bit of this action too, to uh, make sure you get into all the little nooks and crannies since you poked all those holes to make the fur.
All right, the tip of the tail will be the last part. That's just what I'm holding on to right now. Um, so now that it's pretty much completely. Sorry, I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. It nope. looks like an issue with the router. And Alexa, device, stop. So try restarting them. Jesus. Unplug both of them, then plug the router back in. I'm about to Wait unplug you seconds. permanently, Alexa. Once the router is back on and connected My to God. the internet, plug in the Echo device. Hey, how about you shut up? Sorry, I just had to unplug Alexa. I don't know what set her off, but uh, I got my internet offline at the moment. Because I was doing something on my computer and I didn't want it to be online. Didn't want it. Didn't want what I was doing to uh, suck up bandwidth. You know, sometimes you, some program or whatever you're using wants to get online and you don't want it to get online. You just want to do your thing. But anyways, now that there's paint all over this cat, you can just kind of smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. I like the way the fur looks. I don't know if the camera picks that up, but it. Looks nice and rough like a, like he's been out in the rain for a little while. Alright. I think I got that exactly how I want it. So now I just set it down and gently so I don't knock it over. Paint the tip of the tail that I was just holding on to. And depending on the brand of paint you're using, I'm using uh, Liquitex Basics. I bought at Hobby Lobby. But I also sometimes use the uh, Hobby Lobby brand, and it's really no different. And I'm going to say it's probably going to take about 15 minutes to dry. And, you know, it'll actually be a day to be completely dry, but it'll be dry enough to touch within 15 minutes if you're mailing this you want to wait at least a day to make sure it's not still tacky but I'll be back in a moment to uh, add the finishing touch while I wait for this to dry. All right now that that's dried off a little bit looking good if I do say so myself. That scary Halloween cat. What I'm going to want to do basically it's a black cat it's a black Halloween cat so uh, all it really needs is some glowing yellow or green eyes whatever your preference is. I'm going to do that by first getting a little bit of white paint. And I should go right about there, I think that's good. Glopped a little bit too much paint on that, but it is a very easy fix by taking a little more black paint and simply going over the spot where you added too much white. There you go. That's good. And the reason I put white paint first is because if I just do straight yellow paint, it's not going to, I mean, just because of the brand of paint, your brand might be different. Whoops, that's a little too much yellow, but your brand might be different. But this particular brand of paint, if I just go straight on the black, like say like right here, you can see, uh, well, I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's not super bright. You have to add like three or four layers for it to uh, start looking really bright yellow. But if you put the white paint there first, 
then your yellow paint is gonna show up a lot better. And normally I would probably wait for that white paint to dry a little bit, but you don't have to. There you go. Some glowing yellow eyes. And you could leave it like that, and that's spooky enough, but I'm gonna give them some pupils once that dries off a little bit. And the last step, take a little bit of black paint and make a little line right over the eyes as your pupils. Make those pupils as big or small as you want, but I think the uh, narrow pupils are the spookiest. Uh, mess up a little bit. Just cover it up with some more yellow paint. Perfect. There you go. That's a spooky black Halloween cat. I made him a little pumpkin earlier, but I haven't painted it yet. There you go. Spooky Halloween kitty cat ready to pounce. Ready to pounce. And you can find this guy in my Etsy shop in the link below if you're interested.